Okay, in this video, I'm going to go over the specs on the brand new iPad, the Apple iPad 3. Now, it's not officially called the Apple iPad 3. They call it the new iPad, but for the sake of differentiating this product from the previous products, I'm going to call it the Apple iPad 3. Now, I have a whole host of videos on this device, so if you want to check any of the other videos out, please click on the link at the end of this video. Now, the Apple iPad 3 is very similar to its predecessor, the Apple iPad 2. There's only a couple of differences between the two devices. The most notable upgrades are the screen, the rear-facing camera, and now the device offers voice-to-text dictation, which is built into the operating system. Now, this device ships with iOS 5.1, and if you're familiar with iOS since iOS 5, you can actually use this device as a standalone device. You no longer have to connect your iPad to a computer to get it started. So if you're the type of person that has very basic computing needs, you can actually use an iPad as your only computer. Now, it's reported that this device has a 10-hour battery, and that's rated for using just the device regularly with Wi-Fi. If you're using the device with 4G LTE, then you get a reported nine hours of battery life on the device. Which is pretty impressive because you have a higher resolution screen and that is something that's going to suck down battery life much faster than the previous generations of iPads. So you actually have to have a larger battery in this device and that's going to affect the size of the device and the weight of the device. Now it's obvious that it hasn't affected the size of the device with length and width, but it has in depth. The Apple iPad 3 is 0.6 millimeters thicker than the Apple iPad 2. The height of the device is still 9.5 inches or 241 millimeters. The width is still 7.31 inches or 186 millimeters, but the depth is now 0.37 inches or 9.4 millimeters. Now, under the hood, the brains of this device, the CPU, is Apple's A5X processor. Now, in the Apple iPad 2, they use the A5 processor. So, basically, it's the same processor. It's still a 1 gigahertz dual-core processor, but the X in the Apple iPad 3 in the A5X name differentiates it because it actually has a beefed-up graphics processor. The graphics processor in this device is a quad-core graphics processor. Keeping in line with bumping up the specs on this device, they've added more RAM, so they've gone from 512 megabytes of RAM on the Apple iPad 2 to 1 gigabyte of RAM on the Apple iPad 3. Now, as I touched on before, this device has a high-resolution screen. So this device has four times the resolution of the original iPad or the iPad 2. You still have your 4 by 3 aspect ratio, and it's still a 9.7 inch screen measured diagonally. The interesting thing is, is that this device is 2048 pixels by 1536 pixels. That gives you 264 pixels per inch, not as dense as the Apple iPhone 4S, but that's because it has a smaller screen. The screen is also an IPS TFT panel. And to put this into perspective for you, it actually has 1 million more pixels than a regular 1080p display. So if you have a 1080p television set, this device has 1 million more pixels than your TV. So it has a grand total of 3.1 million pixels on this panel right here. And that gives you an idea of why it's so difficult to make out the pixels on this device. This 2048 by 1536 pixel display is called a QXGA display. Now, as always, you can get the device in black or white. There's actually 18 different configurations of iPad 3s out there. There's an AT&T 4G, there's a Verizon 4G, there's a regular Wi-Fi version. All of those options come in either black or white. And then from there, you can choose the capacity, whether it's a 16 gigabyte, whether it's a 32 gigabyte, or whether it's a 64 gigabyte version. This one happens to be a black, obviously, 16 gigabyte Wi-Fi only version. 
Now, if you do opt to go with the 4G version, you can actually use this device as a Wi-Fi hotspot. The device supports Wi-Fi 802.11, A, B, G, and N, and it also supports Bluetooth 4.0. Now, because the device has a beefier battery, just because it has to power the screen, like I said, the Wi-Fi version of the Apple iPad 3 is 51 grams heavier than its predecessor. If you're talking about the 4G versions versus the 3G predecessors, the AT&T version is 49 grams heavier, and the Verizon version is 55 grams heavier. And it is a noticeable difference in the weight of the device. Now, as far as sensors on the device, you still have the multi-touch screen, you have a proximity sensor, an ambient light sensor, a three-axis gyroscope, a microphone, a magnetometer, an accelerometer, and assisted GPS. Now, because this device is slightly thicker, some of the old cases might not fit this device. If you have a more rigid case from an Apple iPad 2, it might not fit. If you have a more flexible device, it might fit. I was told that you'd have to determine this on a case-to-case -case basis. Supposedly, the Apple Smart Covers, the ones that are magnetized that you can put on here and it just covers the screen, they all still work with this device. So that's good news if you want to upgrade from an Apple iPad 2 to an Apple iPad 3 and you still want to use your old smart cover. Now the last thing we're going to cover is the camera. Now the front facing camera has not changed from the previous version of the Apple iPad. It's still a VGA camera. But the rear camera on the device is really what's been upgraded. Now back here you still don't have an LED flash on the camera but this camera has been upgraded considerably from the previous rear-facing camera on the Apple iPad 2. This is a 5 megapixel, 5 element iSight camera, and Apple resurrected the iSight brand to name this camera. And from my limited experience with the camera so far, I can tell you that it's a welcome upgrade. So that's pretty much it for this video. If you have any questions or comments, please post them down below. If you like what you see, please subscribe. And if you want to help out my channel, give me a thumbs up or favorite this video. Now, I'm going to be putting this device through its paces. And if you want to see more videos on this device, just click the link at the end of this video. So that's it for now. I'll see you guys next time.